President. I rise today to express my strong support for Senate Bill 1177, the Every Student Succeeds Act. This legislation sends the responsibility of educating our nation's students back to where it belongs, with states and local communities. I'd like to commend Chairman Alexander and Ranking Member Murray for their work to advance this legislation through a very ideologically diverse help committee and they did it by a unanimous vote in committee. <clears throat> the full Senate then had a vote. That was 81 to 17. And we had a conference committee. We haven't had many of these. Uh, it was with the House of Representatives to iron out differences between the two bills. And that passed by a vote of 38 to 1. It's been a long time since we've had numbers like that around here. In fact, it's been a long time since bills went to committee and had the opportunity to be amended in committee and then went to the floor of the United States Senate and had the opportunity to be amended on the floor. And of course, even more unusual to have a conference committee then because it passed both houses and uh, come up with a 38 to 1 approval of the conference report, which is what's now before us. This is one of those instances where we get to vote for it or we get to vote against it. I'm hoping that almost everybody votes for it, just like in these previous votes. We in Wyoming are very proud of our school system. We're proud of the way that we support our students. We support our educators. We support our staff. In fact, the Constitution of Wyoming says that there will be equal education for every child. We carry that to an extreme. In Wyoming, that means there even have to be equal buildings, as well as opportunities and facilities and teachers. And uh, that's run through the courts every once in a while just to make sure that it is observed, and it is. And we're proud of our students and our buildings and the education that they get. We're really proud of the way that it helps to prepare our students for what's next and ensures that they have the tools necessary to succeed in a rapidly evolving society. This bill, the Every Student Succeeds Act, ensures that Wyoming teachers and school leaders have the power to tailor the education to meet the needs of all students, even in the most rural and remote communities. Wyoming's the least populated state in the nation, and we have probably some of the smallest schools. We believe that kids shouldn't have to ride a bus uh, to or from school for more than an hour. And as a result, we have some schools that have one student or two students or three students. Um, that's a little different kind of a school than most of the nation has. Uh, for too long now, I've heard stories from teachers, from students, from parents across Wyoming about the harm inflicted by the prep for the test system that's been in place. That ends with the signing of this bill. Our nation's students deserve the opportunity to learn in innovative and creative ways that will stimulate their minds and open their eyes to the countless opportunities we have in this great country. Our nation's teachers and school leaders deserve the highest levels of support and training to help our students recognize those opportunities and help prepare the next generation. Our nation's parents deserve the option to choose what educational opportunities are best for their child. This act ensures that all of that can occur by empowering states and local communities to make the decisions they think are best. This is a diverse country. There are a lot of difference, differences between our states. We have some common policies, we have common law, but there are still differences. I'm always a little riled when we're compared with some of the other countries around the world and how our students are doing. I've been the chairman of the Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions Committee before and did some research into that, visited some countries to see what their education system was like. One of the ways that they get better scores on their tests is they kick kids out of school. In India, they guarantee a sixth grade education. They say they guarantee a sixth grade education. They do a cleansing of the schools in fourth grade. They say these kids are not participating in their education enough and they kick them out of school. 
And those kids will make brooms and sweep streets at night, and they will earn a dollar a day for the rest of their life. That's it. No opportunity for any advancement. That's in fourth grade, even though they're guaranteed a sixth grade education. In sixth grade, they have another purge. And in fact, those people, those kids, will wind up in jobs where they make $2 a day the rest of their life, no opportunity for change. They only allow 7% of the kids to go to college. Tremendous competition. That probably makes some difference in their scores. But weeding out kids makes a different difference. Thank goodness in this country we don't believe in that. We believe that every kid should have an opportunity and give them an opportunity as long as we can. Local school boards are a terrific example of democracy at its finest. Within those meetings, individuals in a community can come together to discuss and debate issues related to the education of their youth. It's in those meetings that students can voice their opinions and have a say in their own educational experience. It's in those meetings that teachers and student leaders can put forth what they think is the best course of action to teach the content in a way that best meets the needs of that community. It's in those meetings that all of those parties can decide how they want to spend educational funds within the budget that the members of that community voted on. The Every Student Succeeds Act that we will vote on tomorrow gives that power back to the local school boards. It allows issues to be debated and decisions to be made in a room of parents, students, teachers, school leaders, and community members who know best what works for the students. It's one of the purest forms of democracy that I can think of, and certainly I, something I think our founders had in mind in their idea of America. In particular, I, our idea of educating our kids. Now, I know that there are some people who are going to vote against this bill, and I've asked why. And the most common answer is, it doesn't go far enough. Huh. It goes further than anything that's been done in this chamber since the Department of, Educated, Department of Education was founded. This reverses things back to states' rights. Now, I work on, around here under an 80% rule. I found that we can talk civilly about 80% of the issues. If we stick to that 80%, we can be productive. If we go to the other 20%, and there's 10% on each side, it's not just Republican, it's not just Democrat. We both have certain things that we would like to see and that we think are right, and uh, we've been fighting over them for decades. But if we stick to that 80%, we can be productive. We can find something that we can have some common ground on. I found that we usually only have 80% common ground on any of the issues. Because again, there's that 10% on each side that we feel is really right and we'd like to do. So the best way to get some legislation done is to leave out some of those things and go ahead and get what you can. This bill does that. I think it goes beyond 80% incidentally. But uh, you can get the whole 100%. But the way you have to do it is get both sides together, keep them out of the weeds long enough, the old rhetoric that they've been arguing on, where they can hear a key word and know the answer to it immediately and not have to listen. If you can get them to sit down and listen and think of a new way to do it, you can get 100%. Because when you come up with that new idea that both sides can grab onto, they both claim it is their idea and it moves on. We're not at that point yet on education, but I really commend the chairman of the committee, Senator Alexander, and the ranking member, Senator Murray, for coming together on 80% of what can get done and working to get it done. The alternate is to get nothing done. We need to get something done. The people have been complaining about this, and it's been out of authorization for years. This is the first chance we've had to actually move forward with education, to move it back to the states where it'll be most effective, where those diverse states can make up the, their minds on what best will work with their students. And incidentally, most of our states are as big as any of those countries we compete with, with the exception of China, Russia, and India. But uh, they're, they're, they're like making decisions for their state when they're making their education decisions. 
And uh, that's, that's what this bill will do. There aren't any perfect bills, and uh, I particularly don't like comprehensive bills. Uh, that was Obamacare, that was a comprehensive bill. But my idea of a comprehensive bill is it's so big that people can't understand it. And it's so big that stuff can get shoved in there that nobody will maybe notice when it's being done. This is one of those bills that's been worked on for a long time. It's been taken carefully and in steps and put together so that we can, we can move forward with it. The question is, will it work? Yes, it will work. Will it do everything that everybody wants? Hardly anything ever does. This bill will come as close to doing something, like I said, it, it, it's the met most progress that we've had since we got a Department of Education, which is a whole nother debate. But I've been proud to support this legislation from its very early stages, and I'll continue to support that today. The responsibility of education of our nation's students belongs to states and local communities. The Every Student Succeeds Act ensures that responsibility is given to those entities. I urge my colleagues to support this legislation and improve education. Mr. President, I yield the floor.